In today's video, I'll show you how to determine the gyro error, and the deviation in the ship's heading using the amplitude of the sun. Amplitude refers to the angular distance of a celestial body, such as the sun or moon, measured along the horizon, from the east point when the body is rising, or from the west point when it is setting. It is primarily used to determine the error of the ship's compass by comparing the compass bearing of the chosen celestial body with its true bearing at the time of observation. When taking the compass bearing of the sun at sunrise or sunset, and if you are using the amplitude and correction tables which can be found in the Nori's nautical tables, the true amplitude given in the main table are calculated for the instant when the true altitude of the body is precisely zero degree and zero minute. In the case of the sun, owing to the effects of dip, refraction, and parallax, the lower limb at this instant will appear to be approximately half a diameter above the visible horizon. If this is approximately half the sun's diameter, the optimal time to take the compass bearing is when the sun's lower limb is at this distance above the visible horizon. In this video, we won't use the amplitude table. Instead, we'll use a scientific calculator to find the sun's true amplitude. To start, we need to gather the following information. I will choose sun as our celestial body, and we will take the gyro bearing during sunset. Be sure that the gyro repeater being used is aligned with the master gyro compass. At the time of taking the sun's bearing, we should also note the universal time, the ship's position, the variation in the locality, the ship's present gyro course, and the compass course, with the present date and year. You can use the GPS receiver to determine the time of the observation, as well as the ship's position. Take the variation from the navigational chart, or from the ectus. The gyro course should be taken from the master gyro compass, and the compass course will be taken from the ship's magnetic compass. PSC means, per standard compass, and it refers to the heading or bearing measured from the ship's magnetic compass. Our first step is to determine the sun's declination at the time of observation. We need a nautical almanac to determine the sun's declination. The year of observation was 2021 so we will use nautical almanac published in the same year. On the daily pages, find March 14th. The data for the sun and moon can be found on the right-hand page if you are using a hard copy of the publication. The data for the sun is in this column. The daily pages cover three days, this is March 14, 15, and 16. The date of observation is March 14, which can be found in the upper of the daily page. Here, we can find what we are looking for. Let's zoom in. The first column represents the universal time in hours, with corresponding Greenwich hour angle, and declination values. We only need the sun's declination, GHA is not necessary. The universal time when the gyro bearing of the sun was taken was 2 3 hours, 4 8 minutes, and 2 8 seconds. The value of sun's declination at 2 3 hours is south 0 2 degrees 0 9 decimal 1 minutes. It is understood that for this empty column, the values are south 2 degrees, because by inspection, the above values so as below are south 2 degrees. Then take note of the D correction value, which can be found below, the value of D correction is 1 decimal 0. Next, inspect the value of declination if it is increasing or decreasing. In this case, the value is decreasing, noted above. To find the value of D correction, we need the increments table which can also be found in the nautical almanac. Find 48 minutes on the yellow page. We only need the V and D corrections. Our D value is 1 decimal 0, find it in this column. The corresponding D correction for 1 decimal 0 is 0 decimal 8 minute. 
Since the value of our declination is decreasing, we will subtract the decorrection. If it is increasing, then add the decorrection. The declination at sunset is south 2 degrees 8 decimal 3 minutes. Our second step is to determine the sun's amplitude and the sun's true azimuth or true bearing by using the formula sine amplitude is equal to sine declination divided by cosine latitude. You can use any scientific calculator for this. So sine amplitude is equal to sine 2 degrees 8 decimal 3 minutes divided by cosine 2 2 degrees for 6 decimal 792 minutes. Since this is still sine amplitude, to determine the sun's amplitude, press inverse or shift, then sine, then equal. The sun's amplitude is 2 decimal 3 degrees. This value is in the old form, so it has a prefix and suffix sign. For the prefix, if the body is rising, the direction is east. If it is setting, the direction is west. Since the sun was observed when it is setting, our prefix direction is west. For the suffix, copy the direction of the sun's declination. In this case, our suffix is south. The sun's amplitude is west, 2 decimal 3 degrees, south. To determine the true azimuth, or true bearing, if this is our compass, the direction of the sun is, from west, 2.3 degrees, going south. We can find the sun in this direction. The true bearing is this angle. Let's start on the first quadrant. To find the true azimuth, it is equal to, 90 degrees, minus amplitude. If it is in the second quadrant, true azimuth is equal to, 90 degrees, plus, amplitude. If it is in the third quadrant, true azimuth is equal to, 270 degrees, minus, amplitude. And if the body is in the fourth quadrant, to find the true azimuth, it is 270 degrees, plus, amplitude. Since the sun is in the third quadrant, we have 270 degrees, minus, 2 decimal 3 degrees. The true azimuth or true bearing at sunset is, 267 decimal 7 degrees. For our third and final step, determine the gyro error, and the deviation for the ship's present heading. The difference between the true bearing and gyro bearing is the gyro error, which is decimal 7. Subtract lesser from greater. The common error of our gyro compass is usually less than 1 degree. To determine the direction of the gyro error, you can use this rhyming rule. If the compass is best, the error is west. If the compass is least, the error is east. Best refers to a greater value, while least refers to a lesser value. Between these two, the compass is gyro bearing. The true bearing was obtained through calculations. Since the value of compass is lesser, the direction of our gyro error is east. Apply this gyro error to the gyro course to determine the ship's true course. If the gyro error is east, add it to gyro course, but if it is west, subtract the gyro error from the gyro course. The ship's true course is 317 degrees decimal 7. Next, find the difference of true course and compass course to obtain the total error of the magnetic compass. The compass course was taken from the ship's magnetic compass at the time of taking the gyro bearing of the sun. To determine the direction of the total error, use the rhyming rule. Since the compass course is lesser, the direction of the total error is east. Next, apply the variation from the total error to determine the deviation in the ship's heading. To determine the deviation, we will apply the rule big S or big D. S for same name. If the total error and variation have the same names, find the sum. D for different names. If the total error and variation have different names, find the difference. But before applying the rules, 
we will temporarily reverse the name of the variation. This reversal is always done exclusively for this particular procedure to determine the deviation. We will enclose it with parentheses to indicate that the direction of the variation is west. Since both have the same names now, we will find the sum. The deviation is, for degrees decimal 8, then copy the common names. If they both have different names, find the difference, and copy the name of the greater value. You might be using a different method in finding the deviation, this procedure serves only as a guide. Again the reversal of the direction of variation is always done in this particular procedure only, if we apply these rules. In the last part of this video, I will show you another method of determining the deviation without reversing the direction of the variation. Let's check if our deviation is correct by correcting the compass. Our compass course is 315 degrees. The deviation is 4 degrees decimal 8 east. To determine the magnetic course, we can use the rhyming rule, can dead man vote twice at election, or the cadet rule. From compass to true course, add easterly variation and deviation, so westerly error will be subtracted. Since the deviation is east, we will add it to find the magnetic course. Next apply the variation, which is 2 degrees, decimal 1 west. Use the given direction of variation, not the reverse one. Since the direction is west, we will subtract it. The true course is 317 degrees, decimal 7. Upon checking from the above true course, we got the same value, which means that our deviation is correct. We can determine the deviation using another method that does not require reversing the direction of the variation. The rules are, if the total error and variation have the same names, subtract, then copy the common name. If they have different names, add, and copy the name of the greater value. Since they have different names, we will add. The deviation is, for decimal 8 degrees. The direction is east because, it has a greater value. If we observe the rules used in the second method, it is the opposite of the rules used in the first method. The second method looks simple, but take note if you use the second method. If the total error and variation have the same name, subtract to determine the deviation. If the variation is greater than the total error, name the deviation, opposite of the common name. To make it clearer, let's have another scenario, where the variation is greater than the total error. I will not go through this in detail as I have already discussed it earlier. I will only focus on this particular part of the procedure to determine the deviation. The only difference from the previous scenario is the direction of the variation, which is east, and let's assume that the true bearing at sunset is 266.7 degrees. The total error in this scenario is 1.7 east. If we apply the variation using the first method, we will reverse the direction. They now have different names, apply the rule big D, we will subtract the total error and variation. The deviation is 0 degree decimal 4, the direction is west because we copy the name of the greater value. Remember that we have temporarily reversed the name of the variation, so in this particular procedure, the variation is west. In our checking, the true course has the same value, so the deviation is correct. Now, using the second method, we will not reverse the name of the variation, it is still east. So the total error and variation have the same names, and it is stated in the rules that we will subtract the same name, the deviation is 0.4. Since the variation is greater than the total error, we will name the deviation opposite to the common name, that is why the direction is west. The procedure shown in this video serves only as a guide. You might be using another method in determining the deviation, it is still in your preference which method to use. 
That's all for now, I hope you found this video helpful, see you in my next video, thank you for watching, bye.